Today on Step by Step Science, we're going to bring you another challenging demonstration. In this demonstration, I like to call Think Inside the Tube. And what's going to happen is I'm going to do some experiments on this tube, and the students are going to have to figure out what's going on inside the tube. This is a great challenge activity for your students because they have to observe and explain experimental results without being able to look inside the tube. This is a demonstration that I do with my students when we talk about atomic structure because really we don't know what atoms look like. We perform experiments on atoms, we get experimental results, and then we build models based on our results to explain what we have seen. So this demonstration, as I said, is called Think Inside the Tube. To begin this demonstration, I have each student take out a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. On their paper, they are supposed to draw this diagram. This is the diagram where they're going to draw what they think is happening inside the tube after I do each of the experiments. The blue line here is actually the tube, and then we have the two washers, we have the string, and then we have the two washers at the top. That's what we have here, two washers, string, and the two washers at the bottom. Okay. Now what I'm going to do as I tell them, I'm going to do three different experiments. After each experiment, they're going to draw what they think is happening inside the tube, which should match the observations that they make from each experiment. Okay, and I'm going to start now with experiment number one. For experiment number one, I pull this washer, and this washer goes up. I pull this washer down, and this washer goes up. And then I pull this washer up, and then I pull this washer down, and the other one goes up. So that is experiment number one. Now that they've seen and made those observations, they have to draw what they think it looks like inside the tube. Now that I've done the first experiment and given my students some time to draw what they think it looks like inside the tube, I'm going to call one of my students up to the front of the board and have them draw on the diagram what they think it looks like, and then we can evaluate it together as a class. Avery, Avery, put your phone away, Avery. Okay, did you guys do your drawings? Did you guys do your drawings? You did your drawing. Okay, good, Donna, that's good, you did your drawing. Avery, did you do your drawing? Avery, yeah. did you do your drawing? Okay, which one of you would like to come up to the front of the board and draw what you think it looks like inside the tube? Let's see. Uh, okay, Avery, how about you? Come on, come on, come up to the front of the board. Take the pencils out of your ears. Come on, try to be serious now. Put them down and then draw what you think it looks like inside the tube. Hopefully, you were paying attention. Okay, now, does that explain what you saw in the experiment, Avery? Yes, Mr. Swarthout. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, have a seat and we'll see how it works out. Avery drew this simply that the string goes across and that the two washers are connected to each other on both sides. And that seems to match because if we pull this washer up, then that washer goes up like that, and we pull that like that. If we pull this washer up, then the other one comes up and that matches just like that. So that seems to be a reasonable explanation for what we saw during the first experiment. Okay, now we're going to go right into experiment number two. And experiment number two works like this. If I pull this washer up, then that one goes up. And if I pull this washer down, then the other one goes up. And if I repeat the same thing on the other side, I pull this one up, and that washer goes up. And then I pull this washer down, and that one goes up. Okay, so that was experiment number two. Now, what the students have to do is they have to draw on their diagram what it looks like inside the tube, and they have to draw an explanation that will match the experimental observations, the results of our experiment for experiment number one and experiment number two. It's very important that you point that out, that what they draw has to explain experiment number one and what they saw in experiment number two. Okay, did both of you do your drawings for the second experiment? Okay, all right. How about, since Avery did such a great job last time, let's give Donna a chance. Okay, Donna, why don't you come up and draw your experimental 
observation. Draw what you think it looks like inside the tooth. Avery, stop throwing things in class. Now let's see if what Donna drew for the inside of the tube matches what we observed during experiment number one and also during experiment number two. Now this is a common drawing that students will give after experiment number two. But you see it doesn't work because really everything is tied together and really nothing will move. If I try to pull this one up, okay, then this one will not be able to move because it's also attached over here. And the same thing if I try to pull this one up, and this one will not move because it's also attached over here. So this explanation does not match what we saw for experiment number one and for experiment number two. Okay, but now we're gonna go into experiment number three. So this is experiment number three. Now, before I do experiment number three, the students, I'd like to just review one and two really quickly. So here was number one. I pull this and I pull this. I pull this and this goes up and I pull this and that one goes up. And then I go to the other side, and I pull this one up, and then I pull this one, and then I go over here, and I pull this one, and then that one. Okay, that was experiment number one and experiment number two. Now, for experiment number three, I simply hold the tube in the middle, and I pull this one down, and the one on the other side goes up, and I pull this one down, and the one on the other side goes up. And now this a little bit usually freaks students out a little bit because now they're really having to have a hard time coming up with an explanation. So that was all three experiments, number one, number two, and the last one, number three. Okay, now let's see which of our students wants to, hey, what happened to Avery? Avery, wake up, no sleeping in class. Come on, get up, go up to the board, and draw what you think it looks like inside the tube that explains experiment number one, experiment number two, and also experiment number three. Uh-huh. So Avery thinks there's a little man inside. Okay, so that's what you got, Avery? A little man lives inside the tube. Little man. Okay, thank you very much, Avery. That's great. As you can see, in today's class, nobody came up with a model that explains what we observed in all three experiments. Occasionally, a student will come up with a model that explains what we saw in all three experiments. But I do not reveal in class what it looks like inside the tube, because the most important thing is that students work to come up with models and explanations for what they observe in experiments. If you think you know what it looks like inside the tube, then please leave your explanations in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all our amazing physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give us a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment. Don't forget to click the notifications bell and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.